Howdy and welcome back. This is Ethelred, the worst Civ player on YouTube, with what I hope to be the last episode of the Russian series. And let us go ahead and click start turn and start talking about some history. I did uh, research a little bit more history. Uh, night, starting with 1952. I've already talked about the Korean War. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. The um, 1952, the United States moved B-36 Convair and B-47 Stratojet bombers to French Morocco. Yeah, let's be friends. That's nice. These bombers could deliver nuclear weapons and were within striking range of Moscow. So Moscow is now under a constant nuclear threat by the United States. And... During a large part of the Cold War, Moscow was, not just Moscow, all of Russia was under constant nuclear threat, and as the United States was, but not just from ICBMs, but also from um, Strategic Air Command, which was flying B-52s and other strategic bombers uh, just outside of Soviet airspace 24 hours a day for years and years and years and years with nuclear weapons on board so that given the command they could move to their targets within Russia and destroy them let's see let's uh, let's repeal the art art funding so Russia lived under that threat or the Soviet Union lived under that threat just as we feared the um, the Russian ICBMs. 1953, it was called an armistice, which ended the Korean War. The Korean War did end in this year. Although, as I mentioned in the previous episode, there was no peace treaty and the United States is technically still at war with North Korea. No, I don't trust you. I'm just not going to give you it. Why should I give you open borders? I don't see it happening. I think that as soon as this engine is complete, I'll start moving parts into Moscow to assemble the spaceship. Also in 1953, the, uh, so a lot of the history here is going to be international in nature because the nature of the uh, USSR's foreign, um, foreign diplomacy was truly international. They were looking to, I'm definitely now nicely in the science lead, um, they were looking for international communism. They were trying to accomplish the goals of Lenin, which was to see a, a communist revolution in every part of the world. And the United States knew this, and so the United States actively tried to counter the USSR in every part of the world. And a lot of what happens, actually, in the next couple of decades is in small governments, small nations, where, um, where this, this conflict plays out like a giant chessboard. 1953. What else happened in 1953? Okay, so the um, the democratically elected government of Iran was moving into the USSR's sphere of influence. That's never going to complete while this game lasts. We don't need any research agreements. So yeah, the um, the leftist government of Iran was moving to nationalize its oil industry in a early socialist slash communist move and they were moving now into the sphere of influence of the USSR so the United States staged a coup there and they instilled a Shah so they removed the democratically elected left-leaning USSR friendly government and installed a Shah which is a monarch and that monarch was friendly to the United States also in 1953, Stalin died. 
Next. Um, hopefully we're moving on to 1954 now. Trying to ignore the world leaders as much as we can. In 1954, there was a democratically elected government in Guatemala, which also declared its um, solidarity with the USSR. And so, yes. See, now look at this. This right here I should screenshot. How do I screenshot? F12? Yeah! This guy right here, Brazil, he's on top, and he's kissing my butt. Because I got one nuclear weapon. I just had to screenshot that. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So Guatemala had elected a left-leaning government, which was moving into the USSR's sphere. And the U.S. sponsored a coup there as well and replaced it with a right-wing government. Nikita Khrushchev replaced Stalin. Now, you notice that Stalin actually died in 53 and Khrushchev replaced him in 54. That's because there was a major power struggle that happened inside the inner Politburo. Uh, completely cloaked from the outside world. I don't know. I'm sure that it's now it's history. It's probably public history. I don't know what it was, though. But, uh, yeah, 1954, Khrushchev becomes chairman of the USSR. His main rival was executed a couple of months later. And a lot of people now trying to move for one kind of victory condition or another. But I think I've probably got the lock. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a Huck Rebellion now in the Philippines. So, there was a communist insurgent military or communist insurgent army in the Philippines that actually was initially um, put together, they self-organized to fight the Japanese. Of course, Japanese are no longer a belligerent, it's, you know, now eight years since the end of, of World War II's hostilities. And this um, paramilitary group has been hiding in the jungles and fighting the government of the Philippines because the Philippines was a U.S.-leaning democracy and the Hucksters... It's a really complicated name. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Uh, the name was shortened just to Huck. We're going to go ahead and add our first space ship part. And I don't think that there's any more spaceship parts to build. I don't see that there is. Let's just check. We will go ahead and just start building a nuclear missile. Sure. Why not? And we will start moving parts into Moscow to become spaceship parts. Okay. Next. Oh yeah. People now really trying to win. Yeah, let's let's be friends. What was I saying? Oh yeah, the Huck. So the Huck were defeated in 1954. The Philippine government defeated them, which was a blow to the USSR because the Huck represented a chance to bring the Philippines into the sphere of influence of the USSR. In 1955, the Warsaw Pact was was formed in response to NATO's policy of containment. The Warsaw Pact was a, an alliance of all Eastern European communist-leaning governments um, to fight the NATO alliance in the case of a shooting war. What else? 1955. The first meeting between Eisenhower and Nikita Khrushchev happened. Syria and Egypt joined the USSR in an alliance in return for military aid. So a major diplomatic gain for the USSR there by getting two important Middle Eastern countries into their sphere of influence. Brazil, are you trying for the science win? Is that what you're going for here? Is the culture win not enough for you? Let's take a look at that. 
Yeah, they sure are. This is a close game, although I still, I still believe I'm going to win this. I'm just, uh, we're like five turns from winning this. All right, 1956. I'm just going to keep talking ahead here. The Red are okay, so in 1956, Hungary revolted against its Soviet occupation. Hungary, throughout the USSR, really fought for its liberty. It, I, I believe it, it was more than just one occasion, but in this case, there was an uprising. They managed to get control of a couple of cities. The Red Army came in and crushed the Hungarian Revolution. And really importantly in 1956, Khrushchev delivered a speech to one of the uh, party conferences and it was titled something along the lines of On the Dangers of the Cult of Personality. And in it, he said, look, as a great people, we cannot allow ourselves to be lured into following one man's charisma. And he's talking about Stalin. How do I write my tree? There we go. Kill the spy. Pop the great person. Two turns left. So yeah, and the effect on internal communist politics was, was dramatic. They moved Stalin's body quietly and without any ceremony from Lenin's tomb and they just buried it in a cemetery along with a bunch of other minor leaders of the revolution. They tore down a lot of monuments to Stalin. They dismantled many of the gulags. Prison conditions improved. Stalingrad was renamed the Volgograd. Um, they really disavowed themselves of Stalin and, and set the USSR on a sustainable path of a, um, of a true bureaucracy, not just a great man's government, but a truly self-sustaining bureaucracy. It was a big move for the USSR. And now it is more than, um, it's now more than the sum of its parts. Alrighty, doing the caravan to Kizzle. And we'll go ahead and pop that guy. Every, um, every technology which we get right now is just for score. Oh good, and next turn, the last booster will be done. I'm a real idiot for not having finished this booster earlier. I should have won this game a couple of turns ago. If I lose in the next couple of turns, it's because I was an idiot. What else? 1956, USSR sponsored an insurgency in South Vietnam. That had major consequences, which we will not get to in this game. I don't really feel like talking through the Vietnam War anyway. I'm actually really reticent to talk about any history from 1950 and on. I feel like I'm in the living memory of people and um, it's just too close to home still. And this booster will move to Moscow. And it will... Is that it? I think that's it. There it is. Yep, it goes. We win! You have we won! Of nature I have finally won an Emperor game! To a brave new world. So, Your wow, 1957, the USSR launched Sputnik. Burn in the night sky. How awesome is that? Uh, Poland protested communist rule, and it was put down violently, and the USSR launched Sputnik. So, all right, let's look at... Um, let's look at the ranking. Where did I get? Down here someplace. I've never heard of this dude. But at least I'm better than Ivan the Terrible. It would have been funny if I came in as Ivan the Terrible. That would have been funny. I actually, maybe I should have skipped that last tech so I could have come in as him. Um, demographics. I was only first in literacy. I, other than that, 
was an unremarkable nation. And let's take a look at the replay. I'm interested in a couple of things here in the replay. I'm actually also interested in looking at the charts. I should flip over to info here in a minute. And a little bit of, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so here's messages. Uh, here's the graph. Yeah, that's what I was interested in. And Brazil is the green line here. They were head and shoulders above everybody else. If we just uncheck everybody except Brazil and Russia. Because those are really the only two civs that mattered in this game. Um, and there's apparently a red ah, Japan. So here's score. Let's look at all right, a couple of things. Let's look at... I want to see science because I know we were neck and neck. Wow, yeah, they were... Jeez, I didn't know they were overtaking me. How is it that I was ahead in techs? I guess it must have been because I was using great people better than they were. They must not have been using great people adequately. Is there a text thing here? Can we see that military might. And I was, even with my nuclear weapon at the end, I was still nowhere close to them. This really was a squeaker of a win. I did not dominate this game. Wow. Alrighty, well... I think we're done here. Thank you so much for listening to this and all of the other series. Um, it's, it's really gratifying to have finally won. So thank you very much. I appreciate everything that you've done, all of the comments that you guys have left. Uh, the sub the, those of you who have subscribed, I've really appreciated the subscriptions. I've enjoyed every like. Thank you. I appreciate the likes. And I will see you again soon, probably as the Incas. Have a great day.